Hello, um, welcome. I see some of you coming in and welcome to our um, Welcome to STEM Secondary webinar. Um, we're just gonna wait a couple of minutes so that people can come in. I do see Karen Johnson in, is it there she comes? So thank you for joining us. Um, we're just gonna wait a minute or two to make sure everybody can get into the webinar. So thank you for being here tonight. Hi, Dr. Johnson. Good evening. All right, um, this is being recorded. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. If some people do arrive a little bit late, um, they can always go back and watch the recording. So welcome to tonight's um, webinar. This, hopefully if you are here, you are a new to STEM secondary parent. So that would be middle school or high school. We're really excited to help kind of orient you to um, some things about the school, hopefully answer some questions. If you do have questions, we're gonna do our best to answer them as we go. And um, please, we're gonna ask you to use the Q&A box, which you should see at the bottom of your screen. Um, so that way we can make sure we're keeping track of which questions we've answered. Um, so if you do have questions, you can put them in there. So I'd like to just start with a couple of introductions. Uh, my name is Anna Magley Habrock. I'm the assistant director for the middle school. So focusing on students in grades six to eight. I'm gonna toss it to Dan. Hi everybody, my name is Dan Hoffman. I'm the assistant director of the high school, so grades nine to 12. And I'll toss it to Karen. Good evening, everyone, and welcome STEM families. We're excited that you'll be joining us. Um, I'm Karen Johnson, the director of curriculum and accountability for K-12. And I'm Nicole Bostel, communications manager at STEM. All right, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen um, and hopefully we can um, just get you kind of oriented. As Dr. Johnson said, we are so excited to have your um, young people joining us at STEM this year. Um, I know it's, a, it's always um, challenging to start at a new school, but especially this year, we know there may be a lot of questions um, and we're just hoping to answer as many as we can, knowing that situations are changing. I recognize some of your names. I know you were at our webinar last night. If you were not at our webinar last night where we really spent a lot of time going into the details of what um, kind of the schedule is going to look like this fall, I'm gonna encourage you to look at that. Um, Nicole does have it posted on the stemk12.org. So please feel free to look there. Um, there'll be a lot of answers to questions about cohorts and those types of things. Um, so I'm gonna go through a few slides and um, just hopefully do kind of a general orientation to STEM school, um, communications pathways, and some kind of general things about us. So a little bit about our K-12 leadership and administration. Um, there's a few different faces on here, some of whom you can see here tonight. But these are some people that you will see um, answering questions, giving webinars, and, um, the, and these slides will be posted if you need to refer back to this. Um, but so you can generally kind of know who to contact with some different questions. Um, so again, Anna and Magli Haberach, students call me MH. Um, so you would know to reach out to me with questions specific to six to eight students. And you can see Dan Hoffman on here for, six, for nine to 12. Dan's gonna speak a little bit here for us. So if you're new to STEM and you haven't come from a PBL school or project-based learning or problem-based learning school before, you might be wondering what, uh, what does that mean for our students, uh, for your young people? Um, and what I really wanna communicate uh, with you all today is that uh, what we care about is creating a really engaging and meaningful educational experience uh, for our students in the building. Um, and a lot of the time students might be working through abstract concepts without a grounding in a real world connection. Um, and our problem-based learning model uh, encourages our teachers and our students to really work on real world problems uh, and with real world products um, in an engaging way that has an audience that extends beyond the classroom. And so we think that this curriculum is not only rigorous, and prepares young people for a life after STEM, 
but that uh, it is joyous and fun and engaging um, and gets better results uh, because students are more bought into that system. Um, and so uh, we include this quote from the Buck Institute because I think it sums up a lot of what PBL is about. Uh, but we try to execute that with our own STEM, STEM systems and instructional approach. Um, and we've seen great results for that, uh, not just in outcomes, but in the fact that uh, our students love and enjoy learning. So that's what PBL is about to me. Karen, would you add anything to that? No, I think that that was uh, a great synthesis of what we're trying to do at STEM. Um, and part of what makes our, our secret sauce so special is that um, also not along with PBL is the integration of technology and using technology as a tool, being able to access uh, these problems and use real time data so that um, students are really authentically engaged in what they're learning. Thanks, Dan. Great, thank you. So that's really kind of an overview of who we are. And I know we probably have questions about who are these teachers that are engaging our young people in these amazing tasks. I encourage you to visit stemk12.org and look at our staff list. Um, we have teachers with amazing backgrounds um, who come from a variety of places and they are engaged in really high level professional development right now, really learning on how to engage young people um, in developmental differences and differentiation. And I encourage you um, to go there and look for your young person's teachers. And as you um, think about that, if there is a time that you have a question about curriculum or how something's going in class, I encourage you um, to have your young person reach out to their teacher directly and for you to reach out to that teacher as well. Our teachers really want um, success for every single person in their class. So please um, feel free to reach out to them. Dan, this one's for you. Yeah, another, um, another system related to PBL or, or like PBL that is uh, not strictly unique to STEM, but that we take a lot of pride in um, is restorative practices or restorative justice. And there's two different systems. So one system is restorative practice. And for that, I, I like to use this diagram that you can see on the right side of the, the, um, the uh, slide there. And it's called the um, uh, social discipline window. And what we can see is, we want to both have a lot of uh, um, discipline. We have a high standard for behavior at our school, but we also want to match that with the equally high level of support for our students. So a lot of times we talk about uh, uh, discipline or restorative practice is just a response to a, a discipline problem, but restorative practice is more than that. It's how you set up your community. So we set up our community with very high standards for our students how they're to behave in the building, how they're to behave academically and socially. And we match that with an equal amount of social emotional support for them so that they can meet those expectations. And that's where really where you see restorative practice come together. We're not doing things to students. We're not punishing them and, and putting them down without a uh, really strong backing of why. And we're not doing things for students. It's not permissive. And we're certainly not engaging students, which would be neglectful and not uh, responsible. So we're really trying to be with our students, do things with them, including how we respond to discipline. And when we respond to discipline, that's when we talk about so, uh, restorative justice. And that's a response. And we try to do that uh, discipline response with students too, so that the consequences to their actions are uh, meaningful and they restore and repair the harm that was caused by breaking down in our, our social contract, if you will, at the school. Um, so we try to avoid uh, a disconnected type of punishment, like banging erasers together for a more holistic type of consequence that ties back to how our community norms were violated and how they can be repaired and grow from. And this is not, um, this is not, sometimes there's a misconception that this form of uh, discipline response is uh, lackadaisical or just kind of a, a slap on the wrist or just a conversation. This is, you know, there are serious consequences and we believe that it's actually gets to a deeper, more meaningful re, uh, repair to community norms than just having, um, just having a one-off unconnected uh, punitive response. And uh, it's something that's being used by law enforcement and 
um, in uh, ways to avoid incarceration. Uh, so it's used in serious, very serious circumstances. And so we take it seriously and we think it's best for uh, your young people to engage with that form of a restorative system than a punitive one. Great, thank you, Dan. So in addition to kind of this idea of um, discipline, um, we're gonna, as we go through the slideshow, answer some common questions that we have. So we often get questions about student fees. I know most, if not all of you, have already done express check-in um, through Infinite Campus for your young people. Um, so our student fees for sixth to eighth um, are $200 and for ninth to 12th are $250. Um, I will post this link, um, this slideshow, and you'll be able to see this link where we have um, information on where these fees go and how they help support the school. Um, so you'll be able to access this link on the slides um, at the end of the show today. Parents also often have questions about um, testing. So I just have a little bit of information about some different testing schedules that we do. We really try to um, use our testing process and all of these, um, these tests to give us the best data we can to inform instruction. Um, so some different types of things are iReady, um, which happens three times a year, MAPS testing, which is twice a year, um, CMAS, which is required by the state and happens in certain grades. You can see the information up there, so it's not every subject every year. Um, the SAT typically happens in the spring. This fall, it will be for seniors. This is only for 2020 um, because of um, last spring and the SAT being rescheduled. So that is a unique situation for the SAT. And then our seventh and eighth graders take the PSAT as well as our 11th graders. Um, so those are all some of the standardized tests that we do at STEM. Um, Dr. Johnson, did I miss anything with testing? No, I think that you covered it really well. One of the focus areas for our staff this year will be formative assessments. And by that, I mean, they will be creating assessments that really give us data that can align instruction. Um, these are high level tests that we use um, to look at the big K-12 focus areas and that align with our unified improvement plan. And um, some of them are um, great indicators of our student performance. And um, we'll continue following along with the state guidelines and accountability in those areas as things change. They did cancel the CMAS last spring, postpone it, and um, we'll be getting news or uh, updated news soon on that as well for this this coming spring. Great. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. I think it's also important to note with what um, Dr. Mr. Hoffman was talking about related to our PBL style of instruction is that we do not teach to the test at STEM. That is not our instructional model. We really want our students using those critical thinking skills um, and with our problem-based learning approach. And um, we use the data from the test to help inform our instruction. Another area that we often have questions about is about enrichment or some after school programs and clubs. Um, so for after school programs um, at the both middle and high school level, um, we have a whole variety. I only listed a couple on this slide because I didn't want to have the whole slide filled up, but we have um, a lot of robotics clubs, Cyber Patriot, FBLA, um, and on the STEM school website under the enrichment tab, you can find a lot more information about our after school clubs um, and other enrichment experiences for our young people. Um, we also have an athletics program at STEM. I am a co-athletic director along with Mr. Hoffman. Um, we have a variety of sports, including um, at the varsity level, cross country, golf, cheer, slash spirit, girls volleyball, boys soccer, basketball, girls soccer, track and field, and boys lacrosse. Um, we are in the process of applying as a school for CHASA membership, which is the Colorado State High School Athletics and Activities Association. Um, and our application will go in in the spring. With that, we're following all CHASA guidelines, including unfortunately the fact that they just um, postponed many of our fall sports. So this fall we have cross country and um, golf and all of our other sports will start January or later with three small seasons in the spring. And that's due to CHASA regulations um, around athletics. But we will, we're very excited to have cross country and golf this fall. Um, we have very full teams and rosters and registration for athletics, if that's something that you're interested in, is on the um, athletics tab on the website. 
Our athletics program is for nine to 12 at the varsity level, but we do have some middle school sports um, through enrichment specifically. I know this fall we have cross country. Dan, is there anything for athletics that you'd like to add? No, I think you covered it really well. We do have a question um, about what athletic programming is available at the middle school. I don't know if um, you can speak a little bit to that, Anna. I know um, it doesn't fall under the same category as what yeah. I run for our athletic programming for high school. But. Yeah, at the middle school level, um, it's run by our enrichment director, Sarah Phelps, and it really depends a lot on student interest and um, availability for volunteers and coaches to run the programs. So I know that they're forming a middle school cross country program right now, um, and they've done a middle school cheer um, has been a club and program in the past, and there may be more opportunities available depending on exactly um, kind of where we have student interest and what clubs we're able to get together. And obviously this year, to some degree, we're also needing to um, ensure we're following regulations. Um, so for a lot of contact sports and um, indoor sports, those are being pushed to the spring um, across the state right now. All right, we um, often also have just questions about before and after school care. Um, we have in the past had before school care. I'm actually working right, I was emailing about this today. We're working to see if we can get that started back up. Um, it is suspended for just right now as we figure out temperature checks and getting students into the building um, and how all of that is going to work. We do have after school care available um, for the secondary students. Um, they enter and exit through the middle school cafeteria doors. And we have more information about that after school care on the website um, if you are interested in that for registration. All right, this is a very important slide and one that we often have um, many questions about. So I wanted to make sure we take some time to go over driveline. Um, so I have some pictures on the next slide about our driveline, but it's important to think about dropping and picking up your students safely. We do have 1800 students at STEM um, and that is a lot of cars coming through. So just a couple things we really wanna stress safety. Um, we're often in rushes and we're in hurries both in the morning and in the afternoon, but really thinking about student safety as our number one most important priority. So slow speeds, we do ask no cell phones at all in the driveline. Um, and follow directions, we'll have staff and volunteers wearing vests out in the driveline um, and please follow their directions. We do ask that students do not get dropped off in the streets surrounding the school um, because that can cause a really dangerous safety situation with students crossing streets um, and um, with so much traffic coming in and out. So we do ask that students are not dropped off in the streets. Um, this says students can enter and exit through the main elementary entrance. That's on the elementary side. That's a typo on my slide. It should be through the middle school entrance. Um, students should not be dropped off in the morning prior to 730 um, and students should be picked up within 20 minutes of their release time, which may be different if they have a club or activity. So on this next slide, we have an aerial view of our drive line. Um, so the, on the left, we have secondary. So if you have secondary students only, um, you're going to come in through this direction. Um, so as you come in on Ridge Line, you can turn right and you'll go through our drive line um, and cars will kind of back up into this what's kind of called like the snake um, and students can as once the cars are at a complete stop students can be dropped off they'll get out of the cars and then all cars will exit this direction um, so for secondary only students will ask you to do all your pickup and drop off using this traffic pattern. And you can find this graphic um, on our website as well as when we publish this slideshow. Some of you I know have students both on the elementary and on the secondary, um, in the secondary schools. So if that applies to you, you're gonna use the elementary driveline and your secondary student can walk to that side to pick up those younger kiddos. So um, for that, you're gonna come in on Barron's, which is on the other side of the school um, and come around the parking lot this direction and pick up on the elementary side over here. Um, Dr. Johnson or Mr. Hoffman, anything to add about driveline? I know we often have lots of questions about driveline. The only thing I would add is, um, Although we're in the hybrid model and we won't have as number the same number on a typical opening drive line um, and families, please be patient with us. It usually takes 
um, you know, a few weeks for parents to learn the processes and for students as well. And, um, and so thank you for your patience with that. Um, also, um, it's, it is very important to understand that we do have staggered start times and staggered end times. So that's why we stress the, the 20 minutes. So our elementary students can be um, leaving campus safely before our middle school and, sec and high school are released. And um, the same thing in the morning, they arrive a little earlier. So thank you for that. And you'll be hearing more about the driveline um, in the next few weeks as well. Thank you so much, Dr. Johnson. Um, I would reiterate um, in those first couple weeks, if driveline seems very frustrating, bear with us. It just takes um, everyone a little while to learn the systems. And usually by about the third week, things are running really smoothly. Um, a little bit about student check-in. Um, as I said, I think most of you have um, already done your um, check-in through Infinite Campus. There's no like physical student check-in, everything's electronic. And I know we've had a few questions about student schedules. When are you going to get them and know about elective choices? Our registrar told me that um, today that they should be posted on Infinite Campus on August 10th. Um, so take a look at Infinite Campus. Um, they're early next week and that is where um, you can find those schedules, which I know your students are really excited to see. Um, there's some more information on our website under student check-in for enrollment um, for current students. I know we have um, some questions about Spartan launch um, and it's going to look a little bit different this year, but if you have young people that are new to STEM and really excited to get into their Google account and learn a little bit about Canvas, we're going to have a virtual Spartan launch next week. You have an email about this. Um, it's also listed on our all staff or our all um, school calendar. So you can see the Zoom links there. You can go either to, from 1230 to 130 or from two to three on Tuesday, August 11th. You don't need to go to both. Um, at that Spartan launch, they're going to go over things like how to log into Canvas, how to get into your Gmail, um, kind of some of those basic things that are going to really help as we get into orientation week. Um, uh, students also learn about the STEM student expectations, culture, um, and all of those types of things. We do have some um, student tours. I know some of your young people are really excited to get into the building, see their way around, um, look at how the hallways look, those types of things. And there is a sign up link for some of those new student tours in that same email where you got the information about Spartan Launch. So I know there's been lots of questions about Spartan Launch and we have young people really excited to get into Canvas. I know we have new computers, um, all those types of things. We're excited to get into it. So if you attend Spartan Launch, we can help you um, get organized with some of that. Dan or Karen, did I miss anything on that with launch? All right. We would love for you to become involved in our STEM community. We have a, an amazing community supporting such amazing young people and teachers at our school. So there's a variety of different ways for you to get involved. Um, we have our SAC, our Student Accountability Committee, the PTO, um, and you can find some information about those at stemk12.org. We do ask our parents to um, volunteer and help out 30 hours per family, and you can sign up at stemk12.org. So Dan, I know, did you want to speak a little bit more about PTO? Sure. I mean, if you're looking to get involved with PTO, I've been involved with uh, as an admin going to PTO meetings. It's a great group of parents that are really working to um, help support teachers and support the school. Um, and they're uh, always looking for more participants and, and folks to help out and help that grow. Um, and uh, it's a great group. So uh, that's a, an awesome way to get involved. Um, I will also mention uh, we are, do have a athletic specific booster club that's starting parent started group um, that's specifically helping with uh, high school athletics. So that's another place uh, to get involved with parents. And I know Karen, you've been working with uh, SAC and might have some additional information about them as well. So the School Accountability Committee is made up of parents that are elected and um, they meet once a month. And the large focus of the School Accountability Team is that direct line of communication that works with the board and with administration. And they look at higher level um, needs such as 
um, budgetary recommendations, um, the uh, scheduling, things that affect students and the culture. Um, they help um, assist on the unified improvement plan and they analyze um, large bodies of data. So we um, send out the parent student survey each year and they analyze that data and report out with recommendations of how to move forward. And um, they also um, look at the CMAS data and set uh, the SATs and PSAT data to determine appropriate goals in our unified improvement plan. Great, thank you. Safety um, is an important topic to talk about. Safety is very important for us. If you do come um, to the school to volunteer, um, just be aware we do have Raptor guest registration, which means that you'll need to register at our desk and get a badge. Um, so everyone will get badged in and um, no adults are in the school without that badge. We do have security cameras as well as security personnel. We do run safety drills um, on a regular schedule. We also have multiple mental health providers on campus um, that help to provide us with safety. If I could just uh, mention something real quick, we did have this question about um, uh, parents and volunteers inside the building. We are still working through what that looks like right now under the current conditions. Right. So as we head into orientation week and the first weeks of the in, um, of instruction with our hybrid model, we will not have any parent volunteers until we have that process worked out and if that's safe to do so. So once we are back to more of a normal schedule or we have a procedure that is in place where we can safely allow volunteers or parents into the building, uh, we will share that with parents. Great, thank you so much, Nicole. Mm -hmm. We have had um, a number of questions about supplies. What kind of supplies do your students need at the secondary level? Um, really, the, the major requirements is a laptop and a charger. That's really what your students will need most of the time. Um, so many other kind of some basic school supplies, something like some pencils and pens, a notebook to write some things down in, folders maybe to keep track. We don't have a lot of paper at STEM, but occasionally they might get a permission slip or something like that to bring home. So having, um, you know, a folder or two. And earbuds or headphones are really helpful um, in class um, for, you know, needing to watch a video or things like that on those laptops. But um, there may occasionally be a specialty class that needs um, some other equipment. I know I had some questions about like a student bringing a guitar, um, but generally speaking, really it's a laptop and that charger, um, which is very important. And then maybe just a couple of kind of basic school supplies. I know we have a lot of questions about this hybrid learning. Again, I'm only going to briefly go over it tonight. If you really want an in-depth information about the hybrid learning plan, I really encourage you to go to stemk12.org and watch the recording of last night's webinar where we went into, Dr. Johnson went into very great detail um, about our learning plan for the fall. But generally speaking, orientation week is going to start August 17th. Students will begin attending academic classes the week of August 24th. All of the hybrid students will be in cohorts and they will attend um, with their cohorts. And if you have questions, um, please watch that webinar or you are welcome to reach out to us directly as well. We do encourage um, a lot of parent partnership at STEM as you've probably gathered, um, but specifically this fall, we're gonna ask you to have frequent com conversations with your young people about following mask requirements and how we can really help to all keep each other safe. Um, encourage those socially appropriate safe distancing and we know that both of these things are tough for our young people. We know that wearing masks and staying away from friends um, can be really tough for our young folks. And we really encourage you to just um, talk to your young people, try to help them um, understand because we really want to keep the STEM staff, your child, your family as safe as possible. It takes a team. Um, we all try to have a growth mindset here at STEM, um, which means we're always learning. So there may come a time that you have a question or you have a concern or you want to know more. 
We ask you to engage in problem solving conversation with your child's teacher first. Um, so if you have a question, please feel free to reach out to that child's teacher or have your child reach out to their teacher and try to solve that problem. Um, if that issue can't be resolved or that's not working, please feel free to reach out to me for grades six to eight or to Mr. Hoffman for grades nine to 12. Um, if we don't have the answers or solutions, which we don't always, we want to partner with you and your child and for all of our STEM students to try to do what's best for them. So please do not hesitate to reach out. You can find all of our information on that website. Anything to add there, Dan? I see you nodding. Just agree. And, you know, um, a lot of times something might feel like it's, uh, it's an issue that needs immediate elevation or uh, you want to come to it, us about a problem that's going on and it ends up that it's a miscommunication or um, a, a drop piece of communication. And so really reaching out to the teacher, building that relationship with the teacher is a key uh, move um, uh, because a lot of times things can get straightened out at that level um, and it creates a, a way to empower your, your young people to really go out and, and take charge of their education too, to ask, that, uh, ask those questions that are seen or try to clarify. And of course, we're always available if that breaks down or if, uh, if uh, you need extra support. Great, thank you, Dan. Um, and this is always true with STEM, and I would just say this is doubly true as we move into this hybrid model and a new type of education that's new to all of us, to our teachers, to our young people, um, to really think about being willing to reach out. Our teachers are learning this system along with us. Uh, so please feel free to reach out. Um, you know, there, there may be issues and I am confident that we can problem solve and make things the best possible solution for your child and for all of our STEM students. Some other sources of communication, um, just if you want to keep up on what's going on at STEM, uh, Nicole Bastel will send out a weekly newsletter. There's usually many links in that newsletter. I encourage you to read through it, click on the links. Um, we often have lots of updates and information in there. Um, please check out our website. Um, we also have a Facebook page, Twitter. You can call our phone number. And I do have um, myself and Mr. Hoffman, as well as our director, Ms. Dr. Wayman's emails on this slide as well. So you can reach out to us directly. Even for tonight, you're welcome to ask any questions that you have. And also, if you have a question that's really specific to your situation, you're welcome to just reach out to us directly um, by email and we will get back to you as quickly as we can. Just pausing in case Nicole wanted to jump in because I might have missed a communication pathway. Uh, no, I, well, I would say um, parents, if you have the opportunity to visit our website up in the top right hand corner, you'll see a parents um, link up there. That's a really good resource for you. I encourage you to click on that. Um, three options for you to choose from, get involved, get informed and get connected. Um, all the information is tailored for you. So please explore that. It is a lot, but it's very informative. Great, thank you. And um, to end tonight, we will be here to answer any questions. I think my team has been hard at work doing some Q&As while I've been sharing my screen. Um, so thank you team for doing those Q&As. And we can also, um, if you wanna use the, I believe it's the raised hand option, is that correct, Nicole? Yes. Um, if you wanna ask a question live, we can answer those as well. So feel free to use that raised hand option if you are wanting to ask us a question directly. Hey, Margaret, you are permitted to talk. Just um, unmute your microphone. I missed a portion of this because my alarm didn't go off in, on my phone, but do I understand that this will be recorded and placed on your guys' site for me to be able to go back through and look at what everything you guys just did? Yes. Yes. Okay. Where exactly would that be? You will find that under the uh, middle school tab. So on the top bar under academics, click on either middle school or high school, and there will be a um, post in the little rotator that's on that page. Uh, there should be one up right now that includes the PDF of these slides. All right. There uh, is a question. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. You are permitted to talk. Um, so, oh, so sorry. One second. 
Go ahead. I'm actually a group read son. I'm actually going into sixth grade. And I had a question about STEM. So I know how there's going to be two days at school and two days, oh, not two days, three days for the rest of the week um, online. So for the online learning, I just wanted to ask, for the online, uh, my mom was telling me earlier that you watch a video and then while the teacher is teaching the kids in the classroom, you just watch the video and then you go into a waiting room for Zoom and then the teacher specifically goes into that room and lets all of you in. Is that how it works? Well, I would like to start by saying welcome to STEM and welcome to sixth grade. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, and it may differ a little bit from class to class exactly what it looks like, um, but what you spoke about is what it may very well look like in many of your classes. When you're in person, your um, teacher will greet you and get you um, working. When you are um, in, doing that online learning from home, um, your teacher may have you start by watching an introduction video, talking to you on Zoom. You may live Zoom into their class lecture. It may just depend on what works um, based on the subject area and that exact teacher. Um, but your online learning um, will, um, yeah, it may be watching videos, zooming, live Zooming with a teacher, um, or doing some class discussions online with your class, those types of things. And during that orientation week on the 17th, your teachers will talk a little bit more about what it looks like um, in the specific classes that you're in. Okay, and welcome you. to STEM. You're, Nicole, you're still on mute if you were speaking there. Sorry, uh, Margaret, go ahead. So if your kid is taking um, AP classes for the very first time, so we're coming from a very different school. Um, we're coming from a, a, a small private school. So if she's taking a, AP classes, are they in seat at STEM or, you know what I mean, like hybrid at STEM or does she end up taking any of those college classes at the college itself? Dr. Johnson, I'm gonna try to answer this one and feel free to correct me if I, I'm making mistakes on this. Okay. So if, if, uh, if your student is taking AP courses, those would be in-house at STEM um, across the board. And that means in our hybrid model that they would be the two days a week uh, right. at STEM and three days a week virtually with our teachers. We do offer some concurrent enrollment classes at STEM in the building, which would be offered the same way. Um, so some of our English Lit concurrent enrollment courses, for example, are taught by our teachers, but are for college credit. We also have students who take concurrent enrollment classes through Arapahoe Community College or other college campuses around the Front Range. And for some of those, they are going to the university for those classes. Now this fall, they're following the same university guidelines that those colleges are putting forth for in-person or virtual learning. Um, I'm not clear on exactly what those are. Uh, Karen, you might have an answer about what Arapahoe Community College is doing exactly, but those, um, while you're getting credit through STEM, some of those courses are being taken offsite. So would and the intro to entrepreneurship be one of those classes that are offsite? No, the intro to entrepreneurial is actually on site. So okay. um, if you were signing up for an offsite at ACC or other facility course, please reach out to Liz Dugan. She um, arranges for that and there's paperwork to get them um, enrolled in those classes offsite as well. So how do we know which one of those classes that she chose would be that? Would you guys notify us of that? Yes, when you receive your student's schedule, um, those would be the classes that are on, cam or on campus, on site. Okay. We also have um, a question in the Q&A that I'm going to answer about orientation, which is whether it will be at physical school or virtual. Um, and it may depend a little bit on what 
um, learning plan your student is signed up for. So if your student is signed up for the hybrid learning plan, you'll get more information about that orientation based on their cohort. Um, if your student is signed up for that 100% virtual and wanting to do that orientation virtually, you'll get some information about that as well. Nicole, anything to add to that? Uh, no, that's great. Thank you. Okay, and it looks like um, Bupreet has one more question, so go ahead. Just make sure to unmute your microphone. Yes, um, so I was just asking, I qualified for um, advanced, English. advanced English, social studies, and science. science. And um, I was wondering, do I still get it? Do I still get advanced instructions? And how would I get advanced instructions if there still is advanced instructions for those classes? That's a, yeah. Yes, that's a great question. And um, we just want to assure you that in um, all of our middle school classes, that um, we have an honors pathway as well. So there are options um, to take honors language arts at sixth grade level, um, and then um, science classes as well are accelerated along with um, social studies and math. So our goal at STEM is to place you in the class that's most appropriate for your needs. And um, we strive to do that and we're very proud that we're able to do that for students and give them flexibility in their learning. I think the question is, so we had already worked with Alexa and she had said that he does qualify for accelerated uh, courses other than math. I think the question is because with hybrid we're assigned to cohorts, right? And the cohorts are not necessarily accelerated, are they? And so, um, so that's where I I think the question is, if we're part of a cohort, how do we get the accelerated instruction? Does yeah. that make sense? So because they're cohorted by day, not necessarily by class, they'll still have all the cl regular, the classes that they would have on their schedule. Um, so when um, you get your schedule on August 10th, you should see those um, accelerated classes um, on there. And um, it shouldn't, the cohorting shouldn't affect um, your young person's ability to take those classes. Got it. Uh, that's wonderful. And if I do not see those accelerated courses on the schedule, then what's the right next steps? How do you reach out to our director of special programs, um, which is Liz Dugan, and you can find her email. We actually just put it in the chat box. You can also find it on the website and we can work with our registrar to make sure that um, your young person gets into the classes that they need. Wonderful. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, and we have a question about where to get schedules, um, which is through Infinite Campus. No, that's when. Oh, when? No. Oh, sorry. It said when. I thought it said where. Sorry. August 10th is what our registrar told me today. So they should be at August 10th. Okay. I don't see any more hands raised. No other questions in the Q&A or the chat box. So we still have a little bit of time left if anybody has any additional questions. Okay. Um, looks like Carla, just go ahead and unmute your microphone. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. So we are new to the Douglas County um, School District and we are new to STEM as a freshman. Um, I got my infinite campus login for my daughter and um, we are needing her student infinite campus login. How do I go about getting that for them? Dr. Johnson, were you going to take that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I can. I'm sorry. I, I thought somebody else was going to take that. So it, it's a little bit of a process. Um, as you can imagine right now with uh, the way Douglas County is um, cohorting and they're, they're doing express check-in, the system for Infinite Campus has been crashing frequently. So that has slowed down significantly um, our ability to kind of process people as fast as we normally would. So what I would say is if you got your login information, then their students login, for, login information is gonna be coming soon. 
It's just a process in the way in which it's going through the infinite campus piece. So once the parent gets created, then the student gets created, and the rest of the um, accounts start to filter in after that. So I'd give it a little bit more time. If you haven't received it by Monday and you still have time, email us at communications at stemk12.org, and I'll put that in the chat box, and then we can get that to the right person. Perfect, thank you so much. If you're able to log into Infinite Campus, you may be able to see your students' email. Um, if you go under the Family Enrollment Demographics tab, and all of your students are listed there, and you're everyone in your household, and then you would, um, if there's been an email assigned, it would be in that area. Okay, so it looks like Margaret has another question. Um, go ahead and unmute yourself. There you go. So how will extracurriculars work? So I understand the basics, right? So math, English, science, all those, they're gonna, they're, they're easy to be um, orchestrated in cohort type environment. But how will things like, um, I don't know, choir and music and, and like theater and such, how will those things actually work within the cohort or have you guys decided to not continue with those as of right now in the year? So um, I guess the way in which you can think of it is um, all of the classes on, let's say, a normal blue day, um, if your student was already enrolled into a class, um, that class is being cohorted, okay? So the, even though the student may have in period, let's say the first period of the day, they're with a certain group of people um, on every blue day. When they go to their next class, they are gonna be with an, a few new students, okay? So they're gonna be moving based on their schedule, but the, the, they're with smaller groups of people, and this is in the secondary. Um, so they are cohorted on a day, but depending on where their schedule takes them, they might come in, there, there might be some additional students. So I hope that makes a little bit more sense. So their schedule still remains the same. Yeah, but what I mean is, is how does, how does music work when you're online? Like how does theater work when you guys are online and not actually in a room? Yeah. Um, so I can speak to that a little bit, and Dr. Johnson, as our director of curriculum, has been working really hard with our electives teachers, um, and I was an electives teacher prior to uh, moving into administration, so I've been working with some of them, and um, they are really creative, really thoughtful, um, amazing individuals, so um, our teachers um, are really putting your young person's um, ideas first, and we will have, I'm sure, some days that don't go perfectly, um, but our art teachers, our theater teachers, um, our music teachers, our PE teachers are all really thinking about how to make their curriculum best serve people, whether they are in person or whether they're at home. Um, so it may look a little bit different in those subjects than it works. It looks in math and um, English, but our art teacher, um, you know, has really been thinking about what types of materials um, can she have and how can she work with um, people doing digital art, for example, as one way of thinking about using that medium. Um, so our theater teacher um, also has a lot of experience um, working with students remotely. So Dr. Johnson, I'm sure can fill in a little bit more, but um, the idea of a flipped classroom is something that even our electives teachers can use to try to maximize this idea of remote instruction. All right. Let's see if Dr. Johnson was going to add anything. I don't have any more specific e or, uh, direction in that area. I think you described it well. And again, um, parents will be receiving a syllabus and students um, when their classes start to give them more specifics about the content and what they're, how they'll be running their classes. Um, and then just to go back to the question about um, Infinite Campus, I, I know some people have already been logging in. I would say if you don't see everything in there yet, give it some time. The district um, is working right now on trying to cohort um, students. And so that is probably the reason why some um, functionalities may not be working. Uh, we did receive an email that I see will be down for maintenance again. So. Um, just give it some time. And again, if by Monday you still haven't seen something, go ahead and give us uh, 
there's that email in the chat box. Um, send it to communications. We'll get it to the right person and get you set up. Okay. Um, so there was a question here um, in the Q and A. If a student ends up switching from 100% virtual to in person later in the semester, will there be more opportunities for school tours then, or should he sign up for the in person tours in the beginning of the year, even though he's starting with virtual learning? Once we go back to more of a normal schedule or we have the process in place for safety that we can allow parents into the building for tours, we will certainly do that. So what I would say is if you don't feel comfortable coming in during that in-person, um, those in-person opportunities for just students only, if your student doesn't feel comfortable, that is completely okay. They can come in later on in the school year once we open tours back up again. I don't see any more questions yet, so we still have about nine more minutes. Um, so if anybody has any more questions, that Q&A box has been working out really well, um, or you can raise your hand and, and ask it live. All right, Margaret, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, I am that one. Um, so if I understand this correctly, us as new parents have to allow our children just to walk into a school that they've never been to and you've never been to if we want to have them in seat some days without us being able to do so. Am I understanding that correctly? So that, um, uh, that Spartan launch is the opportunity for students to come in in very small groups. We're not opening that up to parents yet. Uh, we are trying to work out, trying to do more of a virtual type tour. Um, but for safety reasons, we can't record an actual tour. Um, that's not something that we're able to record and post online. So right now, what we're trying to do is provide uh, students an opportunity to come in before orientation week, and that's the Spartan launch piece. Uh, sorry, not Spartan launch. That's the opportunity um, that was sent in that email where they could come in in person for tours, but that's just for students. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, let's see, Sarah, go ahead. Actually, it looks like they just answered my question. Yeah, you did. About transferring from another school, does the Google Classroom transfer too? Um, so we actually use Canvas, um, and so that's for the whole group. Um, so uh, unless you're in kindergarten, and since this is a secondary presentation, um, all students will be using Canvas. Uh, so uh, once they are fully registered in the system, uh, they will get a Canvas login and that information will be sent to them. And that's also what's going to be helpful about orientation week. Um, it gives students the opportunity to get familiar with these new platforms. In addition to that, it also allows them to get used to being inside the building. Um, there are some facility ch uh, ch changes to the way in which um, people will navigate the facility, um, one directional hallways, or some of our ha hallways have been um, divided in half so that it allows for two-person traffic if we have enough space um, and then just how to navigate the restrooms new signage those kinds of things okay uh, Preet, go ahead remember to unmute yourself yes, uh, so my question was will there still be sixth grade basketball sixth or grade. is there sixth grade basketball so what I would say is if you take a look at the enrichment page, um, you'll be able to see the offerings for middle school um, on that page. So if that's something that we're able to offer, you'll see that listed there. And you can submit any questions to Sarah Phelps um, and I can put her email into the chat box. Thank you. So you're welcome. Great questions. We have a question in the Q&A about student tours, if they're the same as if you had a tour in the spring. Um, they would be similar. We do have some changes, as Nicole was just mentioning, mentioning related to one-way hallways um, and those types of things. Um, so, you know, the, the building by and large is the same that you saw in the screen, but there may be some additional information um, that might be helpful for you to see. Um, and it looks like there was another um, question submitted in the Q&A about an article. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that and we'll review that. Um, 
I wouldn't want to comment on something that I haven't seen. So thanks for providing that. And I'll take a look at that as soon as we're done. All right. So we've got about five more minutes left. Feel free to submit your questions through the Q&A, uh, through the chat box, or if you'd like to raise your hand. Okay, and just as a, rem um, as a reminder, if you haven't already done so, the academic plan sign-up form is on our website. I posted the link to the um, return to school plan that's on our website. Please make sure to fill that out. The deadline is tonight at midnight. Um, that helps us because we need to start working on breaking out the cohorts tomorrow. And it looks like there's a question in the um, chat box about where can we see our kids in the portal. Uh, again, if you don't see your children yet, if you are in IC, just give it some time. Um, like I said before, they are experiencing a lot of technical difficulties. I'm sure if you tried to do express check-in and you had to try it a couple of days in a row, uh, you can imagine what Infinite Campus is like right now. So I would say if you don't see your kids in there by Monday, to email us at communications at stemk12.org so we can get you to the right person. And again, if you don't see any of those tabs that, that um, Dr. Johnson referenced before, it could be that they haven't been built out yet. So it is coming. Okay, don't see any more questions. Um, We'll stay on until seven o'clock. And just as a reminder, we'll post the recording of this uh, later on this evening to the website. You can find it um, on the middle school and high school page under academics. Wonderful question. Here we go. Go ahead, Dupreet. Um, I just want to say this is the third webinar I attended and all of you or most of you have been here, you know, this is your family time. I just want you to know we really appreciate it as parents as we're all trying to navigate through this unknown situation, which is so very unique, right? And I'm attending every webinar thinking it's probably going to be just same information, but no, like every time I get a little bit more clarity and my confidence level goes up. And, you know, I, I, I feel good. I know there's going to be a lot of things we'll all just weave through and, you know, kind of figure it out as partners. But I just want to say, hey, thank you, everybody. We really appreciate you guys. Thank you for taking your personal time and answering our questions. Thank you so much. We really appreciate that. I know we will share that feedback with our teachers and the rest of our leadership team. They really appreciate hearing all this wonderful feedback that we've been receiving. And additionally, any other feedback that you have, we do have a feedback form on our website. Um, it's under the Contact Us tab. Um, if there's something that we're missing, please feel free to fill that out. I go through that every single day and try to respond back to everybody. So um, positive or negative, we want that feedback so that we can get better. Absolutely, feedback is gift. Um, and so knowing that, that you're checking it so regularly really helps. So for sure, we'll, we'll definitely use that. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're really looking forward to having you in the STEM community. Okay, so we've got about two more minutes or so. So feel free to raise your hand or submit something in the Q&A. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for attending and for your wonderful questions. Uh, Dr. Johnson, you have anything else you'd like to share? Just one final time. We're so excited that you'll be joining us, and we know that it's going to be a fabulous year, and I uh, look forward to meeting you all, either face-to-face -face or virtually. It's all kind of good either way, so welcome. Mrs. M.H.? 
Oh, sorry. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you, um, Nicole, Dr. Johnson, and Mr. Hoffman for being here. Really looking forward to meeting all of you and all of your young people. Um, so thank you so much for being here. Please don't hesitate to reach out with questions. Mr. Hoffman, any last words? Uh, can folks hear me? Yes. Great. Um, sorry for my technical difficulties on my end, but I uh, appreciate all the questions and for uh, getting to meet some folks and welcome to the community and we're going to make it a great year um, and we're going to adapt and it's going to be it's going to be great so thanks for being here great well have a wonderful evening everybody and uh, we look forward to seeing you soon bye